all right what's up youtube so it's an awesome spring day out the sun shining i'm in the shade though right now um but it's clear skies it's warm it's only like 9 30 in the morning normally it's like really cold but right now um so that's good hold on let the camera adjust um so let's see from the last little update video two rabbits gave birth Ooh. there we go hold on two rabbits gave birth There's this girl hopefully you can see her that girl she had 10 babies here's one of the white ones cute little guys and then she had a few black ones and then well okay so she had nine nice big healthy ones oh, squirmy Nine nice big healthy ones, and then one tiny little runt. Um, the runt didn't make it. It died at like two days old. Um, let's close this little one here. Hold on. And then this girl, she had uh, four babies, which is pretty cool. Um, she's got Flemish giant in her, and the dad was a pure Flemish. Her um, breeder, or buck, or whatever. Their dad was a um, the same Flemish giant. So her babies, because she only had four and because of her genetics, they're a lot bigger. Um, unfortunately, Bobo here, uh, Mr. Bojangles, he wasn't the dad. I had him breed with them and he didn't get them pregnant. And then I had Reba bred four times with him and she didn't get pregnant from four really good fall offs. So, I don't know, either his fertility is just really low, or he's sterile, which sucks either way, but I don't know. He was the first rabbit out here, and he's also, like, super sweet, so I'm not getting rid of him. But, I did get, I'm not sure if you guys saw the Blue New Zealand doe that I got. She's pregnant, she'll be doing two weeks, but I got a Blue New Zealand, oh, I have it locked, um... I got a blue New Zealand buck, so I'll have purebred blue New Zealands and then a good buck to breed with my other does. But I'll keep breeding Mr. Bojangles because who knows, maybe his fertility will pick back up and come back. I don't know. If not, he'd make some awesome babies if he does. So it would be cool. Um, let's see. The chickens, or the chicks, um, most of them are olive eggers. Uh, they're all doing really good. There's six um, older olive eggers. I forget. I'd have to look at my notes, but forget the date that they hatched out on. Um, then the rest of them are only like, I don't know, a week and a half old, I think. Something like that. But they're doing good. I'm going to move this camera back up. Uh, the greenhouse is doing really good. See, it's bright out, spring. Hold on. Okay, so everything in the greenhouse is looking good. I gotta get these done today. Um, I'm gonna do a video on this, and this will be next week's video. Um, so you'll see this video this week, and then this one next week, and this is all about the importance of saving your own seed. Um, so yeah, got to get these pricked out and into trays. They're getting a little big. I hope they make it. I just haven't had time. Um, I got four, or two trays of sugar snap peas planted in the orchard. These two trays will go out, uh, looking at them, probably in a week. Um, brassicas are doing good. They're growing a little slow. This year I feel like I got a later start. I know I got a later start, but... I don't know, hopefully these, these guys pick up soon. Um, yeah. I got three trays of spinach planted in the garden and in the, in the orchard. There's three trays in here, and I think I even have three trays in the other greenhouse. Um, figs are doing good. Starting to bud out. Um, so hopefully, hopefully they're taking root. I haven't tested and pulled any yet to see, but they should be good. Um, let's see what else. The hoop house is doing really good. There's a 
a bunch of stuff coming up. There's radishes, there's a tray of turnips, or some arugula. Looks like a couple of the beets are popping up, which is cool. There's a three trays of uh, Chinese cabbages, turnips, more turnips, more beets, uh, blueberry cuttings in the back over there. Uh, they're doing good. Haven't tested those either, either to see if they've started rooting or not. Um, got three rabbits in the tractor that I need to get processed. Um, the one with torticollis. And then the two bucks that I raised up from October when my white doe gave birth. Uh, the chickens are all doing good. Got a bunch of eggs. There's, shoot. I don't even know. There's probably close to, probably close to a hundred eggs between the two incubators that I've got going right now. Um, yeah, there's a lot of chicks gonna be hatching out. Um, got a lot of people wanting to buy chicks from me, so that's cool. Um, they're just mixed rainbow layers, so nothing too fancy, but they'll be fun. Um, and they're super healthy, like it's crazy. Being that the way they are raised on pasture, um, and the way I ferment their feed and their feed itself, um, the birds are just really, they like thrive, it's crazy. Um, but it makes sense, because you are what you eat, and the egg is what the chicken ate, and then the chick is what the egg was made out of, so they're healthy chicks. Um, anyways, here is the garden by the barn. Um, I got a whole bed of Walla Walla onions planted, a whole bed of spinach. Um, I put these little hoops up with some strings because the dogs were walking through the beds because it's been empty all winter, so they kind of forgot that they're not allowed to do that. Um, so that's actually helped a lot. Um, so yeah, this garden's looking good. Might get some a little bit more compost spread on it. We'll see. Um, Got to get compost spread on the pond garden. Speaking of the pond gardens, I'm not going to walk over there, but I pulled the tarps off of them. They look great. There's a huge mole that's living out there, and I've been, I've got four traps set. And he triggers the traps and doesn't get in them. Um, <clears throat> he's a pain in the butt. I tried trapping him last year. I'm in the sun. <clears throat> I tried trapping him last year, but he's just super smart. It's crazy. So Paul was like, oh, you just got to get up there with the shotgun, wait until you see the ground move. He did that in the herb garden when he had a mole that he couldn't catch once. Um, so anyways, if I get the compost spread out there while the mole's still out there, he'll dig up the soil below, bring a ton of weed seeds to the surface, and it kind of defeats the purpose of putting a good covering of something weed-free over the top of the garden. So I want to get him out before I get that done. And that needs to get done, so I need to get him. Um, garlic in the orchard is doing great. Willow is standing on a bunch of spinach that I just planted. It's probably really hard to see, but I planted it um, kind of, it doesn't, it's not a complete two foot strip all the way around the drip line of the tree, but it kind of just varies. It's kind of like one contour with like the shape of the tree. Um, when it comes to planting in the orchard this year, I'm going to be kind of landscaping under every tree. So it'll be a lot of fun, I think. Um, so, I don't know, you'll just have to stick around and see how it looks throughout the season. Garlic coming up under the Mutsu apple, looking good. Planted a bunch of sugar snap peas over here. There's some under this tree, some under that tree over there. More garlic, garlic everywhere. Like I said, there's 13 varieties of garlic in the orchard this year. Um, Paul's garden, like you saw in the last video, we just got compost on it. He'll start planting in a week. Yeah, um, he likes to start the first of April, so that's coming up. Um, Check out this. Looks like an azalea, but it's not. It's actually a mini rhododendron. And Paul and I 
both forgot the name of it um, like a week ago, and then it came to him, and now I forget the name of it again, go figure. Uh, but it's an awesome rhododendron. I love that little thing. He had never pruned it until I got here, and then I was like, can I prune that rhododendron? And he was like, go for it. It's a mess, because his rhodes like this, and like azaleas, are so dense with dead wood on the centers. And, um, <coughs> hold on, here we go. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was a challenge. It took all day to prune that little thing. But it was good. Now he likes it. Um, yeah, oh, one last thing, real quick. My back is killing me today because I, as I look up at the loft of the barn, um, yesterday I had uh, two pallets worth of feed come because I've got 100 meat chicks coming next week. And then I've got all these chicks that I'm raising, I'm gonna grow them out sell them as pellets in the spring and then maybe some in the fall um, and then uh, yeah so I got two pallets worth of feed that showed up yesterday it's in the barn it's organ certified organic corn and soy free and somewhat locally grown it's just across the water in Canada um, it's an awesome farm awesome feed and yeah I'm excited about that the feed prices of the place I was using in Idaho that some of you have heard about. Um, hi Micah, where were you at? Where were you? You were like black. You went from a white dog to a black dog. Just rolling in somebody's dirt. Gosh, that dog's a mess. Um, anyways, the feed that I got was getting in Idaho. Um, I had to stop getting that because they raised feed prices wasn't certified organic but it was practically organic I talked to the farmer that's what he told me I was just going by his word um, and then it was corn and soy free and non GMO so that was awesome and it was a heck of a deal it was like 17 bucks for a 50 pound bag but they raised the prices for the layer feed to I think it was like $22 for a 50 pound bag and it's not even certified organic so I'm like I'm not paying that much for non certified organic feed so this feed was only like two bucks more compared to the price that they raised the other feed to. So I was like, heck, I'll just get that. And this place delivers. So they brought me 90 bags of feed yesterday. And then, yeah, so I got 90 bags of feed up into the loft of the barn by myself. And that was a job. But I got it done and pretty happy with it. Take you up there in a second. I don't want to kill myself climbing with a gimbal and a camera. So hold on. All right, so the, the loft of the barn's a mess. Don't judge me. I've, I was just focusing on getting the feed up here, and then I can organize and clean up everything afterwards. Um, so here is all of the feed. There is a lot. Kind of guesstimating. Well, I know I loaded uh, 4,410 pounds of feed up yesterday. But then I had all of that, some of that, and all of this already. So I'm guesstimating close to 6,500 pounds of feed, which is pretty awesome. That'll last me a while. Um, <coughs> between the 100 meat birds, which, by the way, are going to go into this big brooder. It's, uh, I think it's 5 by 5 by 8, something like that. Um, anyways, I've got quail chicks that actually just hatched out earlier this week. They're in there, um, just chilling until the meat birds come, but they'll all go in here, and, uh, yeah. So, with all that said, there's going to be a lot going on this year. I've all, oh, shoot, I've also got 15, um, bourbon red turkeys coming. I just got those ordered, like, a little over a week ago I guess um, so they're gonna be coming the meat chicks are coming I've got almost a hundred eggs in the incubator hatching out uh, got all these quail chicks got all the chicks in the barn I got I had 14 rabbits but I've got 13 uh, baby rabbits downstairs or down the in the bottom of the barn and then a ton of transplants going out so I'm busy um, 
like I tried to get this video out sooner but didn't even have time to record it so here it is and work with me as I make more videos throughout the season hope you stick along um, I think it'll be a really fun year Paul's excited about it I'm excited about it and I can't wait to get out to market and that'll be a lot of fun so yeah I need to get back to work so have a good day happy gardening and don't hurt your back like I did carrying a bunch of feet up.